So hello Alex, how are you feeling about uh, this conference right after before your after sorry right after your talk? Well, I feel very relieved, obviously, but um, <clears throat> it's been an excellent conference with some fantastic speakers, and uh, I will definitely be looking forward to next year. So this is your first time here. This is my first time in Copenhagen and my first time in this conference. Okay. So now let's talk about the technical stuff. <laughs> so um, I'd like to ask you about the, the topic you talked about in your during your session, mm -hmm. which was uh, this uh, servlet thing, mm -hmm. HTTP and the servlet thing. And the first question I want to ask you is uh, about uh, server push, mm -hmm. which is like the, the killer feature of, of this servlet 4.0. Um, I'd like to ask you, uh, what's about? I mean, uh, yeah, what's about? Well, servlet push is really a feature of HTTP2, and servlets implement this feature. Um, and it's about the uh, server anticipating the resource requirements uh, of the client. So the client makes a request for a page, the server will analyze the page, determine what resources it needs, for example, images, um, JavaScript files, etc. It will then push those resources to the client before it's even responded to the original request. Now this is designed to ensure that resources are available to the client by the time the original request is responded to. And the way this is implemented in um, Serverless 4 or more, more correctly, in the frameworks that use serverless for, is it's implemented under the hood. Now, from the point of view of a developer, a developer doesn't actually really need to do anything. Now, it comes for free with the latest versions of uh, serverless and JSF, and any framework that uses serverless will get this feature, um, depending on how it's been implemented in, in whatever other frameworks. But certainly, JSF will have this feature for free, and the developer doesn't actually need to do anything. It does have access, the, the, the developer does have access to that feature via the um, HTTP request in a servlet or in a filter if they want to have access to it, but it's not obligatory. So if you're using a framework, the resource is automatically analyzed and sent directly back to the client without the, the developer actually doing anything. And this is really um, a key feature of HTTP2 generally, which is that all the changes have occurred under the hood, and from the point of view of most developers, they don't actually really need to do an awful lot, other than to ensure that they have the uh, compatible service, or service that, that support HTTP2. Mm -hmm. What are the implications for a developer who wants to migrate to this new latest version? Well, there are two principal um, issues they need to concern themselves with. One is on the back end, so they need to ensure that the server supports HTTP2, they need to ensure that they are using the latest versions of um, GSF and Servlets 4. And on the front end, if they are migrating to HTTP2, what they ought to do is to look very carefully at the workarounds that have been implemented to overcome the shortcomings of HTTP 1.1 and decide whether they need to be um, fact refactored out. Now, there are various um, workarounds. For example, um, domain sharding was used to get over the restrictions on the number of concurrent TCP connections to a particular domain. And a company may implement several domains in order to be able to increase the number of concurrent connections. That isn't necessary under HTTP2 because everything happens over one single TCP connection and actually having domain sharding could potentially um, slow down the website or at least, at the very least, uh, prevent the, um, the website from benefiting from the performance enhancements features of HTTP2. So there are a much more implement implementations than just that, um, but overall the developer should look at the workarounds that were implemented and to see if they would need to be ripped out. A new, a new development doesn't need to be concerned with implementing those uh, workarounds. They can just simply develop as it is. Now, an interesting point also is that we don't quite know how to optimize a front end for HTTP2 because it's very new. And this is something that a lot of people will need to be focused on and uh, investigate as they go forward over the next few years to see 
what they need to do in order to really optimize for HTTP2 in the same way that they have very successfully optimized for HTTP 1.1 with many workarounds. And what about the browser support for this HTTP2? All latest versions of major browsers support HTTP2, uh, apart from Opera Mini. Now, an important uh, point to note is that all browsers support HTTP2 HTTP2 only over TLS. Uh -huh. So all connections will need to be made um, secure. Now this is not this is not a requirement of the HTTP2 protocol itself. You can connect via secure or insecure connections. It is something that browsers have decided browser vendors have decided for themselves is a good idea to force every single website that wants to use HTTP2 to use a secure encrypted connection. So that's, we can basically say goodbye to insecure connections now. Okay, well, great. <laughs> yeah, great, great premise. So, well, thank you for your time, Alex, and enjoy the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you for your, the questions.